Hello, everyone. Apologies for this little delay. It's always something to finish. Um, I am recording this um, webinar, so if you don't want your faces to be seen, you can um, switch off the camera. Now, you should still be able to hear me. Uh, I'm muting everybody so we don't have any other sounds. Um, thanks for coming. It's Friday evening, so hopefully you have some nice plans for the weekend. And uh, I'm just going to be uh, speaking probably about an hour or so. I have put some slides together so that I don't remember, don't forget what I want to say. So let me just um, uh, find them. Wait a minute. Right, so. Uh, here are my slides. Right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, large flowers and um, how, you know, what are the, the specifics of making them, if, you, if there are any, and uh, which ones you can already make um, based on uh, my other tutorials, if you tweak them a little bit. And uh, I'm going to talk about some new... Um, flowers that I have prepared that uh, you can also learn to make that are specifically made into in a large size. So um, I've only invited the people who are on my subscription list, so um, you probably already know who I am. So I'm not going to talk too much about myself. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what large flowers are and uh, what kind of flower varieties can be used uh, for this purpose. Also, um, how we can make them mm, and what are the specifics and uh, what tools and supplies we will need for that. Uh, fabrics as well. Um, and uh, at the end, I will um, talk a little bit about the flowers that uh, are new and um, uh, about the course that is going to start next week. So um, my name is Svetlana Faulkner. You probably already know me very well anyway. Uh, and um, I've been making flowers now for more than 11 years, um, creating mainly wearable pieces. Uh, so I don't really work on bouquets. Uh, occasionally I make uh, flowers uh, on stems, but uh, I do like wearable flowers. So most of my uh, pieces um, are wearable in one shape or form or another. So it can be anything from um, head trims or head pieces to shoe clips and anything in between chokers, uh, hair combs, you name it. So uh, the flowers that we're going to look at today, are uh, all of them, or most of them are also wearables. So uh, what's so good about oversized flowers and uh, why we need to uh, give them any of our attention? Um, I'm personally fascinated with anything unusual. So I do tiny flowers, large flowers, all sorts of flowers. So last year we did a course in uh, small spring flowers. Um, perhaps next year I will be doing a course on small summer flowers. Uh, but this year we're going to do large flowers for a change, which also have a little bit of their own specifics. So um, they are very impressive and um, they obviously being large, they can one flower can become a whole um, headpiece or um, an impressive um, bridal uh, piece or corsage or um, a choker. So um, it's it instantly draws glances, and uh, you can see that you know it's it's really it's a it's something really impressive. So <laughs> if if you look at small flowers, then they're, they're very small, so you have to look into the detail. They might be uh, no simple to make, but um, I think especially the European mind is quite drawn to uh, something big. 
uh, oriental uh, cultures tend to appreciate more smaller things so I also wear smaller uh, adornments let's say um, so these flowers can be colored in all sorts of ways as always we are going to be coloring everything from scratch so uh, you can do any any sort of coloring you want or your customer wants uh, anything realistic uh, or fancy so I'm going to tr be trying and showing both uh, options with different flowers so some flowers will be more realistically colored others might be uh, fancy um, um, dyed and um, so it's up to you what what to choose and this is the beauty of it you can always uh, match your customer's uh, outfit or, or preferences uh, so obviously since it's uh, handmade from scratch you can always tailor your design uh, what we are going to be making in a large size can always be scaled down a little bit for other applications. So, for example, uh, for a choker, um, these flowers perhaps are too big unless it's some kind of stylized shoe. Um, so if you scale them down, they can be uh, more applicable to some other applications, for example, as a choker or some, something else small or a smaller brooch. Uh, obviously, very bright summery flowers, perfect for spring summer. But um, any any uh, you know all, all year round, uh, you can change the color scheme. You can make them in gray, um, in in navy, more autumnal, winter types uh, flowers as well. So they don't have to be necessarily summery. Uh, bridal and evening applications. So again, perfect for for these um for bridal and evening wear because again you can dye them in a stylized way you can leave them white for bridal or make pale cream um pale apricots uh, beige and uh, etc you can add some uh, more interesting fabrics in it uh, with something with with shimmer um metallics uh, to add a bit more evening evening uh, look or more bridal look to the flowers uh, we're going to be doing that uh, as an option in the, in some of them. And uh, also, again, it's a large flower, so I think automatically people are prepared to pay more. And since it, it's custom made, um, you can always request um, a higher price for your work because um, the flower would be uh, made to measure, so to say, so made to meet customers' uh, customers' demands. and. Um, so this kind of work uh, is always uh, more expensive. So when I say large flowers, I mean uh, flowers that are at least 15 centimeters uh, in size across or six inches, but usually even more. So 15 to 20, some can be made even bigger if you scale the template further up. Uh, at some point, it will become a little bit impractical because our tools are also, in some cases, are limited, like uh, round balls. So they usually the three centimeter in diameter is the largest one in, in uh, normal sets. So uh, we can't uh, enlarge the templates um, constantly. So at some point we have to stop, but a little bit here and there, plus your style of assembly. Some, some flowers can be assembled a little bit looser so that will give you a, a largest uh, flower in size if you uh, assemble them more compactly then they will be a bit smaller um, so there's a bit of a, a, a play here so you you can still make them slightly bigger if you want uh, which flowers can we use for these um, oversized versions so uh, the easiest way is to perhaps go for the flowers that are naturally um, large in, in nature and there is a number of those um, including uh, sunflowers they are normally quite a large flower uh, water lilies uh, can be quite big peonies uh, are also sizable oriental poppies lilies some chrysanthemums dahlias as well so um, up to 20 centimeters so these flowers um, you don't really have to 
even enlarge your templates. In some cases, you have to reduce them to be able to create <laughs> a, a big but smaller version, like with sunflower, because sunflowers can be really big. So these flowers um, are natu naturally big, so we, uh, we can easily uh, go to them for our oversized fabric flowers. And we have already covered some of them. So we did um, lilies. I have a lily tutorial if you want to follow that. Um, we, we did water lilies as well. Uh, sunflowers, uh, we recently we, we covered it in a, a live demonstration. You can still um, uh, go and watch it or watch the recording of it. So um, it's available. You can play with the template. The one that I'm having on my hat is a larger version of the one that we made because the one that we made was supposed to be a brooch. So this one is bigger uh, so you can always blow up your templates a little bit and uh, peonies we did before in a smaller version which was more like a bud um, poppies we did in uh, leather so that was sort of a medium size and also in in uh, um, fabric but that was quite a small one so i'm going to be bringing a large one today uh, chrysanthemums i made several uh, different ones they can be made quite large but also a smaller version if you need and dahlias uh, hopefully i'm going to do one in autumn i have a really one big one in mind so um, i want to to do that so it's more end of summer when it's more relevant let's say uh, so another option for us is to use uh, some flowers that are not large naturally, like a camellia, it's not, a, it's not an oversized flower in nature, but some of them can scale up quite well. So uh, some of these are camellias. So we have a tutorial on a very regular shaped camellia like this, um, and you can, uh, and uh, just scale up the template and make it in velvet or satin uh, and it looks quite good it can be again a whole headpiece or almost like a little hat uh, some roses can be scaled up not all um, orchids also uh, normally they're not very large but some can can be scaled up clematis uh, there are large varieties so it it can be also uh, used for that. Um, class flowers like hydrangeas, so each individual flower is small, but um, if you put them together, obviously you can create quite a sizable cluster. Uh, so you can call it an, an oversized uh, head trim or something. So if you, if you bunch them together. Um, butterflies can also be scaled up quite uh, well, so they can be really big obviously we'll need some uh, wires and uh, appropriate fabrics but it's all quite doable uh, without um, losing the shape or idea of it uh, also there are some fancy flowers that we can make uh, they're not they don't resemble any real flowers so like this one in the picture i am hoping to to have a um, live demo on, on one of these. This one is quite edgy and uh, angled, so it's not very uh, romantic looking, let's say, but I'm sure there's, there will be a lot of people who would like something uh, like this, more graphic, more pointy, let's say, so it's uh, quite sort of stylized um, and has interesting cut cut out so it looks uh, unusual and um, quite lightweight and can be assembled in lots of different ways depending on, on your vision of it. So this also can be quite a large flower. So if we were to talk about the specifics of making large flowers, uh, if there are any, um, Obviously, we need to think about the materials that we 
want to, to use for the flowers. Um, interestingly, um, a lot of different materials can be used. Uh, generally, lightweight fabrics work quite well, especially for multi-petal flowers with lots of um, petals in them, uh, because you don't really want the flower to become extremely heavy. Uh, but uh, flowers with fewer petals can be made out of quite dense fabrics, um, because dense fabrics can give structure uh, to, the, to the flower. So usually these fabrics will also be bagged. Petals everywhere will be wired, so you know the, the flower doesn't droop, the petals don't flop and things like that. So you need them to sort of stand up upright. Um, so yeah, so a combination of textures of your fabrics uh, plus wiring backing. In some cases, uh, flowers are quite stiff, uh, although they might not look it. So to ensure all these right shape of your bloom, so it looks nice, natural, and attractive. So uh, also, we, are, we can easily use heavier fabrics for, for leaves, calyxes. We can include metallics in, um, inside the petals or as uh, backing fabrics for our leaves, which can also be seen. And you can always experiment with uh, different, less conventional fabrics. For example, uh, linen. Uh, I quite like working with linen, so it, it can be easily used for uh, different flowers as well. For example, chrysanthemum. Denim can be used also for flowers like camellia, a large camellia. You can make uh, one out of denim or velvet. Um, so anywhere you use velvet, you can re usually replace it with denim or some thick cotton fabric or linen as well. So linen looks quite nice compared, um, put on natural straw hats, uh, for example, because they both, you know, blend in and look um, natural um, in natural colors. So always remember to experiment, but um, first test, you know, your idea in your head to understand whether it's going to work or not. So not everything will work everywhere, but uh, there's quite a lot of options that do work uh, in a lot of flowers. So here is a linen, for example, um, how do you call it? Chrysanthemum. <laughs> so that's quite a large flower as well. Uh, so, but it, it, it is a lot of work, so the petals are wired and, and uh, backed with another layer of fabric, so to give all this structure and shaping. So, uh, for large flowers, usually we use all our normal flower making tools. Uh, often we will need tweezers as well. Uh, as can, there can be a lot of cutting, especially in flowers like um, chrysanthemum especially well, and some others, so good scissors and um, a stapler to staple petals together because usually the, there are a number of them in larger flowers. Um, nothing special or unusual that we wouldn't normally do, but the usual um, sort of advanced uh, flower maker set of tools. Uh, I do use um, co a combination tool in a couple of flowers here. So that one is sort of uh, extra, but um, it's also available um, to purchase. Uh, dyeing, I did mention a little bit, so we can um, try to do some realistic dyeing on some flowers, depending again on the idea, if your customer wants a realistic flower or a fancy one, or perhaps you could even um, use some factory dyed fabrics if it's okay in your case and you want to save time. Uh, it's very acceptable, especially if the customer just wants one block color. 
so no need to spend all this time dying, but obviously you would not um, get any realistic look or um, color transition, color gradation on your petals. So here are, uh, in the picture you can see some uh, peony petals, so uh, there's different shades of yellow, there's also pink uh, specks on them, so obviously you won't be able to buy a fabric to look like this. Uh, if you if you have after something like that, you'll have to dye it yourself. Um, color matching again, it is all possible to match a color of your customer's dress as close as possible, if, especially if you have a swatch, so you can um, try and um, mix the color to match it um, and um, try to color a sample of the fabric you want to use in your flower because different fabrics uh, will react differently to the same dye. So if you take, for example, uh, a piece of just plain cotton and a piece of satin silk, dip in the same bowl with dye and let, it, let the pieces dry, they will look quite different. The texture of the fabrics are different. Uh, also, the um, fiber is of different uh, origin. So it will result in different uh, color. So there's no point trying to uh, match a color <laughs> to the wrong fabric, basically. So it, the fabric you want to use, you try and uh, co color match it to your customer's uh, outfit. Um, drying techniques, there are a number as well. So some things we want to dry uh, on the newspaper, a lot of stuff that is dried on newspaper. Uh, some things uh, we dry on plastic or glass because we want the dye to stay in there. If I have to dye ribbons, often I hang them up. So I want them to be um, pristinely dyed without any creases or any specks or any folds. Um, and if it's a meter of ribbon, it's difficult to find a newspaper long enough or a piece of paper long enough without any um, joints in, in it. So it's easier to hang it up, you know, from uh, a door frame <laughs> to dry. So there's different things that, you know, can be used and uh, it will also affect uh, the way your color will look at the end. So if, if, I, if I want a very intense color, I want to, to dry it on some non-porous surface. And if I want, for example, some more lightweight, more transparent, like um, watercolor effect, it's okay to dry on newspaper, so the newspaper will take uh, away some of the color and, it, and the petals will look lighter. But in some cases, if I want rich red, I don't want it. So you have to keep it in mind as well. So uh, applications, uh, there are many I've already mentioned. Anything you can think of from oversized, oversized corsages, to headpieces, head trims, sash trims for brides, chokers. So the, one of the new roses in a smaller version is on this choker. So uh, that, that was scaled down. So if you scale it up, it's a very, quite a large rose for um, some impressive hat or headpiece. And so again, it works both ways. So you want to, to make them slightly smaller if you want, or maybe reduce the number of petals as well. So all the usual applications of, let's say, fabric flowers, but also they, them being so large, you can make an instant impact with just one instead of making several. Uh, these are the lilies that uh, I already have a tutorial on, so it's another option for a larger flower. Uh, so tools and supplies, just briefly, I've already mentioned them. So, um, you need some, obviously, some tools, either traditional on wooden handles, if you have a good set, and they include um, all sorts of uh, heads that we will need for shaping different pencils. You need the pads. Um, brushes is also helpful because there's going to be quite a lot of dyeing. And the, the, they don't have to be Japanese, uh, but uh, then you should have enough of uh, just uh, synthetic brushes uh, that you normally use in perhaps different widths as well because some of the parts are larger so that you do efficient dyeing 
Quica. Uh, fabrics. So again, can, we've already talked that different fabrics can be used. Uh, anything from organza, lightweight silks, medium weight silks, um, cotton in some places perhaps. Um, also more dense fabrics for the calyxes, for, for the leaves if you want to use some velvet is, is nice, uh, some heavier satins would look good. Um, as a rule of thumb we try to combine um, in one flower we combine contrasting textures so if your petals are smooth you try to use something more textured for the leaves if your leaves are smooth so the petals should be perhaps matte and stuff like that so try not to choose everything shiny because then just it it just gets gets a bit lost uh, you can um, stiffen your fa fabrics yourself um, and also um, I have some fabric in, fabrics in stock at the moment. Unfortunately, there are problems with deliveries at the moment because of the war <laughs> that we have in Europe. So Japan uh, does not want to deliver anything uh, in the current situation. So it's not um, a lot that I have, but I do have some stuff in stock that can be used. I'll explain a little bit about it later. Uh, dyes, normal dyes that we always use for fabric flowers, which are um, uh, Procyon MX is that what, what I use, um, Jacquard or any British brand or any other brand that you normally have. Uh, this all works uh, perfectly well and uh, they, there's no difference, nothing new here. Um, but I'll be showing how to mix the dyes and uh, we'll be dyeing together in the course. Um, any other supplies that we'll need is, again, usual things like wires. We need uh, wires uh, in the petals in most cases. Uh, some flowers will need stamens. Um, blue. Um, ribbons for current stems sometimes is helpful, but usually if you have, uh, if you need to back your um, leaves, you will have some fabric dyed for that purpose as well. So uh, you will, it will be all in the same color to make a coherent piece. So um, what are we going to uh, learn in the new course? Uh, you can see a picture now. It's three new flowers. Um, they have not been mm, taught uh, in any of my tutorials before. So one is going to be a poppy, uh, there's a rose, and, and a large uh, hybrid peony uh, with an open center. So actually all flowers uh, have open centers and have stamens. Um, I will talk about the, uh, each, each one of them a little bit later. So uh, here is a little overview of the new things that you can learn. So obviously, the, these, all of these flowers are going to be uh, in a larger size than normal. Sorry. Um, three different flowers, poppy, rose, and peony. Um, uh, all of them use a number of different fabrics, uh, both for petals and leaves. Uh, we can cover how to finish uh, them in different ways, so stems, no stems, um, different calyxes, and um, you can use them on headbands, uh, sew them on hats, and things like that. Um, at the end of the course, you will be able to create three uh, advanced level large fabric flowers for your projects or, or for yourself. Uh, you can dye them in the colors that you want, uh, not necessarily how I am dyeing them in the videos, um, because if you already have something on the go and you want to use them there, you're very welcome to do that. Um, and obviously, this flower has been custom made and in a large size. Um, I do hope that you will be able to uh, ask um, um, 
an appropriate price for your work and hopefully increase the value of your pieces uh, to the customers and um, earn more money at the end of the day. So all these flowers um, are quite commercial, which is uh, also important. A lot of work, but <laughs> a lot of impact as well. So uh, the course is in a video format, and we've already done it like this. So it's going to last for three weeks um, and starts. It's, it's starting on the 4th of May, so it's Wednesday next week. Uh, lessons are going to be staggered, so you're going to have a new lesson opening every day. Uh, so for three weeks, three flowers. So on the first week, we're going to be doing a poppy, which is a simpler one out of three. Uh, so you'll have Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, three lessons opening uh, for you uh, on each day and uh, letting you to concentrate on what you need to do on a particular day. So on the first day, for example, you will cut out your parts, dye them. Then they'll be drying until the next day when, when we shape them. And uh, on the last day, we assemble the flower, put it together um, and finish it. So um, flexibility means you do not have to uh, do the flowers in this um, way. So if you don't have time, you know, you've subscribed join the course, but you're busy or you're going away on holidays, it's up to you. Uh, it's going to be, um, the course is going to be opening on, on this uh, schedule anyway. You can come back to it when you're ready and watch it whenever you want. Uh, the access stays with you. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere. So it's just sitting there waiting for you to, to watch and do. Uh, lifetime access, well, <laughs> as long as I am alive, you have access to it. Uh, DIY kits for the course, I've put here there on demand because as I explained, the fabrics um, are not really available at the moment. I could probably put a couple of DIY kits together if, if somebody is interested in it. Otherwise, uh, there'll be alternatives. You know, I'll be mentioning the fabrics that you can use um, out of uh, shops or on, ordered online that you need to, will need to stiffen yourself and cut and shape them. So uh, the structure and um, access is the, very much the same as we've done before with similar courses, but I guess not everybody has been. So nothing new here. Uh, as I mentioned, the main thing is that uh, the course starts on the 4th of May, but it doesn't mean you have to start as well. If you are away or if you can't do it now if you're busy um, you can come back whenever you want uh, but um, if you join now there's obviously going to be a best price plus there will be also a little bonus so the first flower is a poppy um, this is a quite a large one or oriental style poppy oh, we're going to do a detailed center because it is seen um, leaves, uh, it has leaves and the stem, this flower, so not all the flowers will have stems, but if you need to make a stem, you will learn how to make it here. Um, Opie is one of the most popular flowers, obviously many colors uh, are available in nature, including red, um, uh, which you can use as well, but also lightweights, you know, light pinks, um, apricots, uh, darker pinks, and uh, white ones even. So lots of different um, colors that you can use, including some um, perhaps uh, stylized colors if you want to, um, like, like black if you want to make something like that, or maybe black and white um, as, an, as an option. So uh, it is an easier one out of three so we're going to start with it and um, that, then we'll move on to the peony so this peony is a, a large uh, hybrid um, version of of the peony with a, again detailed center which looks realistic but i will also explain how to make a more stylized evening stroke bridal wear style so in case if you want to go that route 
Um, there's different techniques for shaping petals here using tools and uh, not other methods, not only tools. Um, and or also a combination of fabrics here and in another in the first flower, the poppy. So there's always perhaps a couple of uh, fabrics on the go to add more texture and uh, mm, more interest to your flowers. Again, so this one can be either an oversized brooch, um, a nice summer hat trim, um, a mother of the, of the bride corsage, or other things that you want to turn it into. So um, we will make leaves as well uh, for it. So if you want to use leaves, you can. Sometimes I do just a large flower without any leaves and uh, uh, have it as that. So it's optional and uh, depends on what you would like to do with it. And the third one is the more comp most complicated out of the course. So that's why it's last. So uh, it's a large rose uh, with a lot of petals. Mm, here it's not realistic because the leaves are not green so it's all more like pinky apricot beige but you can obviously do other coloring again leaves no leaves is up to you um obviously i'll show how to make but um you might omit or make fewer leaves if you want um contrasting textures leaves and petals there are some metallic fabrics in the rose as well more like evening wear well it's as i said it's a stylized one so um i've used this rose uh, as hair combs as chokers uh, for hat pieces so it's uh quite a nice versatile impressive rose i have uh, the flowers here as well so when i finish talking i can show them in the camera although i don't do not know whether they're going to look well they are not <laughs> sometimes pictures are better so this is going to be the last one that's most work perhaps in terms of petal shaping and assembly so after you've done the first two you should be okay to move on to this one uh, and um, the course is advanced uh, an advanced one so um, I cannot recommend it for anybody who have has not made any flower before so unfortunately although I'm going to be explaining everything in detail but uh, we're not going to be dwelling too much on some basic things that, that you already know uh, in the picture you can see a close-up of the of the rows of the last rows so you can see some uh, petals there and uh, how they are looking close up. So you do need tools, you do need uh, some experience or an idea of the process of making a flower. So uh, it, these are quite complicated, so I do not want you to get all stressed and frustrated that it's, they're not turning out as well as they should. So um, if you haven't made any flowers, it's better to try and do make some simpler ones before moving on to something like this. So if you uh, are going to join today or tomorrow, uh, there is a, at the moment there is an early bird discount, which is 15%. And also I'm going to add um, another flower, uh, which you are going to receive at the end of the course. So it's going to be a photo tutorial, not a video one, uh, just a normal downloadable one on a two-tone uh, cotton. Or I'm making it out of cotton. You can use other fabrics. But um, I use cotton quite a bit, have used lately, because it's quite uh, easy to uh, get for everyone. And at the same time, it's actually quite versatile. And um, you can use it for a lot of flowers. We've used it for, for a rose, for a... A sunflower now you can see a chrysanthemum in this so it's all quite um, doable and um, uh, available so here is a this uh, uh, chrysanthemum it's uh, going to be even slightly bigger uh, than this format so it's not particularly oversized but again it can be 
actually blown up to be bigger. But uh, we have not done a, a fabric chrysanthemum so far, so it would be nice to add it to the library of tutorials. So these are the flowers that you can learn to make. So if you uh, sign up early enough, you get three, four flowers for the price of three. So I'm going to uh, come back. Wait a second. Stop sharing. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now, and also uh, then I can share a link and you can go and have a look at the description of the course and uh, see if you want to sign up. And we will start next Wednesday. So here is a poppy. Let me see if I switch it off. No. Okay. Don't know if it's any better. Peony. If it's a corsage, it's going to be quite big. And uh, the rose. Again, you can do different colors. Here, it's in sort of soft uh, peachy pinks. Uh, the course at the moment uh, with discount is uh, 135 pounds, 15 pence. If you are from the EU, um, please, and, and you'd like to join, please let me know because uh, currently on my website, you can't book it because uh, sales to you are closed uh, so i'll have to send it to my ad shop to do the transaction yes yeah, so um the the fabrics uh, if you would like to uh to order a pack uh, could you please email me and i'll see uh what what is required and then how much it's going to be so all flowers are pretty sizable and but they do have do use quite a bit of fabric so um, I'll need to check my stash. <laughs> uh, we'll need some wires as, as usual. Um, most petals here will have wires because they're quite big. Uh, but um, you can combine different fabrics, which, you know, just normal organzas and light silks as well, that you already have perhaps, or uh, you can just order online. So. Uh, it's, it doesn't have to be fabrics from me. Uh, I, I do really want to work for any fabrics, and uh, usually there are replacements that can be done, or each flower can be made with a number of different fabrics. The final look might be slightly different, maybe less transparent or more transparent, depending on what you are replacing the fabrics with. But um, uh, everything is pretty versatile. So um, you are welcome to experiment as always. So yes, yeah, so um, these are the three ones, the new ones. The little bonus one is still in the making because <laughs> I ran out of time. But anyway, so I hope, you know, if you're not joining the course, you have some idea of what flowers you can make. Uh, this summer um, in a larger size if you want. I mean, you, we already made quite a number of different, different flowers. Um, I hope you, you, you will want to make um, a sunflower perhaps because um, this is quite a fun summer flower, big and looks nice on a straw hat. <sighs> what type of silk do you use? Uh, well, Yvonne, <laughs> in which flower? Each flower has different types of silks. Um, depends on um, on what we're making and um, uh, on the purpose of the flower. So um, I will be listing all the tools and supplies in the course, uh, hopefully beginning the beginning of next week. It's still quite a lot of different you know different work here, but you can, as I've mentioned, you can get some organza, some lightweight 
um, how about Thai, grab the sheen if you have, um, maybe try cotton organza if you have, or organzi. Uh, so um, this kind of fabrics will work for most flowers. Uh, but uh, again, we can see how we can, you know, try something else and see what um, results we will get. So I want you to also experiment. I only have two hands. I cannot try all possible fabrics to see what's going to happen. So this sunflower is made out of organza. I had time to do that. Normal sunflower that we made was quite, um, well, sort of medium weight uh, cotton, which was a different look. And I did really like this, the organza one, the idea of an organza sunflower. So I made it because usually I don't find time to make what I want. I have to write it down and then come back when there is time. But anyway, this one, um, Jeannie, I will send an email with the link and um, the link to this uh, video recording so don't worry anybody um uh, i will be sending it well hopefully tonight even so if you yeah if you want to go on the website if you just tile type in in search oversized blooms you should see the cost there as well so um perhaps that's it if you if there are any more questions um to start the course next week and for the list now what kind of fabric we need. Fabrics, again, as I said, uh, there will be a number of fabrics that we use. Um, organza, some lightweight silks. Uh, you can get crepe de chine. You can get habitai, lightweight, well, four, six. This is usually the weight of silks, but you can experiment with different ones. Sometimes uh, it's not going to change dramatically the flower. I mean, for us, it might if we look close, but for a customer, often uh, they don't go into that detail. So there will be a number of fabrics that are self, I'd say, um, you know, interchangeable and replaceable. But what we're looking for is a couple of textures in each flower. So something really lightweight and sheer like organza, uh, teamed up with something slightly more opaque, maybe a lightweight or medium weight silk that has a bit of, um, you know, it's not as transparent as organza, so you have two textures in a flower that adds a bit, you know, a bit more movement, light, lightweight, uh, lightness, and also um, these fabrics might dye slightly differently, so there will be a, you know, a play on, on color a bit more and things like that. So um, both peonies, uh, the peony and the poppy have um, a couple of different textures here, and um, the rose as well has a bit of metal fabrics, but again, a lot of things are optional, so what you need to concentrate on is more like shaping and uh, assembly, which will probably define your flower more than um, a variation in fabric. So uh, there will be fabric recommendations uh, for what you, what you should be looking for, but Again, try and um, use different ones to see if it's going to work. Something stiff, not too limpy, because uh, you need your flowers to hold um, texture. Uh, other flowers that I have not included, you can always, if you want to learn to make, you can book um, a class, a, you know, a private class with me if there's something that you want to learn. So this one is is quite a nice one. I haven't made it for a while. So that's, this is a satin one, but uh, the petals are all back, you know, with another layer of fabric. And um, it's quite a lot of work as well, like most of these. Um, how to stiffen them. So there is a video on how to stiffen fabrics uh, on my blog even. You can go and watch it now. It's already there. And uh, it's, um, you know, there's nothing really new in that area. So uh, I normally use a stiffy or it has some different name now, but I, I mentioned all in, in, I'm mentioning it all in the video. So if you just watch it, 
I'm on the blog, I think it's second from the top or something. Um, so you can watch them see, you know, how to do it. Are there several brand dies? Mm. I use uh, uh, dies that do not, I do not set them because uh, if you make specs like these and then you start setting it in vinegar or wherever, it's all going to be gone. So in, for flowers, we do not set the dies uh, and flowers are not waterproof. Uh, full stop. So <laughs> we are not exploring any idea of how to fix these dyes. We are not fixing them. You know, the, a cake, for example, can't be dropped because it ruins the cake. You can't fix it. So uh, flowers, we do not fix the dyes because they're not fixable. Otherwise, uh, it's easy to just buy a fabric that is, you know, factory stiff, factory dyed and you can use that. But even those fabrics run. Um, in my practice, I have not had any customer who came back to me and said that the, the dyes ran and, and you know, something was uh, destroyed. I guess potentially it can happen, and so are other, many other things. So uh, try not to, you know, um, stress yourself with fixing these dyes. Do not fix them. We can't fix them. We are using a lot of different dyes on each petal. Petals are all very delicate lightweight they can barely take you know the dye and the the tools they can't take any vinegar or anything else so we're not going that route because otherwise we're not going to be having any of these delicate color gradations because once you put it somewhere else it's all going to blur into a, a brown color that's it curtains for the for the dyeing so uh, I, I'm using, as I said, uh, Procyon MX dyes. Um, Jacquard is a very popular brand available in most countries. Let me just see here. So they're even available on Amazon, but Amazon is not a good price, you know, because they're probably going to ship it for free to you, but they're going to charge you more for the jars. So just look for Procyon MX. Um, and it's a huge palette of colors. But uh, uh, you can choose, I think, on the website, there is a core 13 colors they recommend. So you can start with those, and then you can expand into others. But most colors can be mixed from these, they call them standardized colors. And they even actually offer a list of how to mix, like one part of this with three parts of that and five parts of that. So you will give you an idea, for example, at least, you know, like cornflower blue, what to use, because they have actually five or six different blues there. So nice um, ec economic colors and um, pretty easy to use. I constantly mix, uh, if you could see my table, <laughs> I'm glad you can't, it's probably 20 different jars with different leftover dyes, uh, all covered with a plastic clean film. And so I just take whatever is left and if it's the right sort of color that I can use, add some more different, you know, um, dyes in it. And then here is my next dye. Uh, if it's a yellow, you know, I don't throw it away. I can use them in another flower as well. So they can keep. Sometimes uh, there might be some um, residue occasionally, but, you know, usually if that happens, then maybe throw it away. But um, a lot of them just stay there. I have some labeled. So if, when you go for a green tea, don't throw away the little jars. So I have like dragonfly green, for example, or um, wine red for choker. <laughs> so some that I often use and that are leftovers, I just put them there. Because unfortunately, the only little drawback of this <clears throat> of these powdered dyes is that um, once you've mixed it, it's very difficult to uh, repeat it because you're mixing small amounts of dyes you can't really weigh or measure because the quantities are usually not so big so try to uh, try trying to mix them by the eye basically sometimes it can be tricky um, so this is this is a little bit of a drawback so that's why you know often I state uh, online that if all flowers are made from scratch, I expect yours to be slightly different from the one in the picture. You can't 
100% guarantee. And on a flower bush, there won't be, you know, flowers will be slightly different um, in color too. Uh, plus, they do fade uh, in sunshine. So, you know, I, I have a coral poppy. It starts really coral and goes into really beige with time. Same flower. So it's all uh, perfectly normal, and uh, it's just part of the game, basically. Uh, let me see. Somebody shared, Gretchen shared where you can buy uh, dyes in America. I don't have all the whole shaping tools, but I have some, and if I need you so separate and the shaping fit the other brand the machine. Um, some of the tools I offer separately, but um, some I don't because the supplier just supplies them in big sets. So I can't, unless I find other 14 people who want to buy individual ones from that. So it depends. Uh, I'll try and list the tools. Maybe I'll try maybe tonight to think what I've used, but um, it's all the usual ones that we have. Sometimes you can replace with something you already have. There are some that are really good and I recommend to have them because they do deliver nice results and uh, are used very often. But I'm sure you have the round balls perhaps and the, the knife and things like that which are standard. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so I'll try and list include the tools uh, or a list of tools in the description of the course so that um, you can have a look. Uh, as I said, sometimes you can replace with something else uh, that you already have. Maybe it look, might look different, but will perhaps do a similar job. So uh, do we have any other questions? If not, then I can just try and send a link. Okay, so here's the link, but I will also send um, an email out to everyone um, with the link to this recording and also uh, to the to where you can book the course or read more about it and decide if you want to join. So the best option is to join um, to, today and tomorrow because then you get a free bonus flower as well. Uh, but the discount will last until the beginning of the course, until the 4th of, or the 3rd of May is the last day. Uh, it will be available later as well, but with, without the discount then. So if you want to join later, you are also welcome. Thanks for coming and uh, hope you enjoy your weekend and uh, we'll speak soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.